It is August 1939 and German troops are preparing for the inevitable. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here and welcome back to Gates of Hell, a game coming soon but available now in beta on Steam. Uh, previously we took a look at the Soviet Union's defense during the German invasion in 1941, but now it's 1939 August of course with the Germans preparing for invasion. This will be a little bit of a preview of, uh, well, what their forces have to offer. And of course it's 1939 so we won't be able to see big O tigers or anything yet, but I want an excuse to come back and take a look at the German forces as of course not everything's yet ready for the game. All right equip your soldier with a helmet, rifle, and 20 rifle rounds. All right let's get started then. So uh, basically this is just kind of a minor tutorial to the game for those of you who may not have played uh, Call to Arms before or Men of War Assault Squad before. This is uh, very similar and also very different at the same time. I can tell you as a veteran who's played tons of Men of War Assault Squad and Call to Arms they share a lot of, thankfully, similarities between things and also a lot of differences, too, to make, uh, well, this feel more like a Men of War Assault Squad. Uh, kind of like a mod that finally brings it up to uh, modern standards. Okay, we grabbed our helmet. Let's go ahead and grab a... Where's our rifles here? Okay, we need to grab a uh, rifle, helmet, and uh, a bunch of rounds and stuff. I guess we have to go this way. <laughs> we're, we're taking it slow. All right, well, anyway, yeah, so what I've seen from this game so far is a lot of great blessings for it being a lot more optimized. A lot of people are saying they still love Men of War, and, of course, it's probably one of the greatest uh, RTS games out there for Men of War Assault Squad being, like, uh, super realistic, and with mods like the Rob's Realism mod, it just, uh, it's really, overall, a really good feeling and a really good game. So it's nice to see it kind of being brought into the modern light through Call to Arms. I don't think they could ever make a uh, World War II game uh, on its own again, like Men of War Assault Squad 3 without some clunkiness. So using this engine is really updated. I don't know much about that other than that it just fit, it feels and plays well, and I like what uh, it has to offer. Okay, well, let's jump in there. I like all the new missions. It's something that I've wanted without the uh, base Men of War Assault Squad missions where they're basically either defense or attack and capturing flags. Uh, each mission should have its unique feel. If you've played Wigamod missions before, or if you played the, again, the Sir Henkel missions or Rob's Realism missions, then that, of course, is standard for Men of War. That's really what, what those missions should be. So basically, I'm just following along with these troops to kind of show off more. I really like, actually, how everything looks. It's a good-looking game and s seemingly operates smooth. That's one of the things that we've really needed in this game before. I've also taken some time to moderate some of my controls, too, so I can do some things here. Oh, it looks like it reverted some of my controls back. Oh, well, that sucks. Well, we'll have to make do then. All right, so shoot at targets as much as possible, many of them different ranges away. I think we should be able to, if we go into this control mode, we should be able to, yeah, we can c actually control troops in this game too, although uh, my hotkeys were set differently. There was a recent update, so it may have reset some of the things I did previously. But there is a first-person control mode where you can control each individual troop and tank, and also uh, a third-person mode like what we have here which is considered to be the classic mode, where you can then control the soldier around and uh, also throw grenades, which is a godsend in this game. Being able to throw a grenade properly could save the day and change the course of battle. If you lob an AT grenade the right way or happen to kill enemy soldiers, that would be a good thing. All right, uh, let's see if we can just tell our soldier to do this uh, manually or automatically. Uh, I guess this is just kind of an on-rails thing. We're just following the group as they're doing whatever. This is teaching us, though, the differences between things like the, uh, I think there's an, um, MG-34, maybe an MP-40 there, and also some other rifles and such. So it basically shows you that you can shoot all the different weapons in the game. All right, we now have control of three more soldiers. Cool. What's up next? Just put them on the line and get them to shoot. Uh, so a lot of this stuff I know, ba they're giving us a lot of information, but uh, this game is kind of a easy-to-learn, difficult-to-master type game where if you've been through some brutal ass <laughs> if you've been through the lag of men of war assault squad and men of war assault squad 2 in multiplayer then you know you know the true pain in this game but the community the modern community of men of war assault squad i would love to see what they could do here in call to arms or gates of hell within that uh it's kind of yeah, it's kind of hard to explain i i can't really word it correctly without confusing everyone but basically this is a game within a game you'll need to own a uh, call to arms which i believe is like i don't know like four or five dollars on sale for certain things it depends on what version you get um on sale it's very affordable and then this game within that game which is uh, actually the best of both worlds a modern game with cam a campaign and then also a world war ii version of that within but this does feel unique enough to be its own thing and bringing a lot of stuff that uh, works a lot smoother without being so clunky it's it's actually kind of weird to see the frame rate and stuff 
being somewhat decent. Okay, what's our objective? I need to start focusing on what we got to do. Message, message history. Okay, great. Mission complete. Awesome. See how good you are at this game, Raptor? Yeah, I did it. I didn't even know what I was doing, and I still mission complete. But again, this is all just demonstration purposes. Looks like we're going to take some grenades now. Grenades are probably, as I mentioned before, the Captain, most important thing in this game. Here. One soldier being played by one uh, person, even if it's single player in this game, uh, which it will have multiplayer. But again, one person throwing one grenade at the right trench at the right time could change the course of battle. If you happen to throw an M24 grenade into a, a trench and happen to kill some, I don't know, high-ranking officer or something that the enemy called in, then you got yourself a big win. Oh, dear God, I'm going to have to learn this system again. Oh, boy. Uh, let's lob it there. Nice to show the grenade arc. I don't think the soldiers actually... Let's see if they... Can, um, I don't know how that works now. Oh, now we're in direct control. I want to see the differences in throwing grenades. One of the things that's very important in Men of War Assault Squad is the grenade throw, as I mentioned before. But within that grenade throw, it's the uh, it's really the AI stopping to... Pro like, it does a little processing when you tell it to throw a grenade. So if I uh, tell the AI here to go and throw a grenade... Uh, it's all about how, yeah, how smart the AI is in throwing it. Perfect, wonderful. Sometimes their throw is way off. Yeah, that can make all the difference. Okay, what are we supposed to do now? Re, uh, reline up for the officer there? I guess I blew up a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see. Good work. Head over to the grenade area. Use them to throw up some fuel barrels. Well, we did that. I don't see... Oh, there's one more. Okay. All right, let's throw some more grenades. Come on now. All right, one more grenade. Let's see how this guy does. I'm going to put on... Oh, it seems like it's assigned to F1, so... Let's see how he does. Oh, wow, that's a great throw. Okay, they really improved. Damn. I can, I can tell that this is made by people who played Men of War Assault Squad more than they actually developed the game. Like, their, their in-game time of Men of War Assault Squad is probably greater than the time they invested in, into making the game. That's not a slight. That's just saying that uh, they know the frustrations, and it looks like they ironed some of that out. Okay. Consider yourself ready for posting. Board the trucks in the dispersal area. You'll be shipped off to your regiments. Okay, I think actually we're going to start doing a first mission. Board the vehicle to conclude the military camp training. Wow, it's a very light training. There's so much more to learn in this game. I should start doing uh, tutorials on this one as well, because I'm sure... Some people are getting into Gates of Hell for the first time. There's much to learn. Uh, going AT gun. Oh, okay. Oh, of course. Oh, my. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. There is a lot to learn. I don't even think we need to go through this tutorial because I could explain it quite quickly. I think the probably the most important thing to learn after this would be uh, AT gun range like they promoted us to do before. Uh, but apparently we're supposed to go here and just leave. It looks like the tutorial we can choose to learn more about if we want to, or just leave. Um, this is an AT gun range with the Lee gun here. Yep. A couple of them. Oh, interesting how they told us to leave, but now they're giving us some more additional training. Okay. All right, so basically telling us all about the importance of a machine gun. Our troops are running right literally in the middle of the uh, gun range. Hilarious. Uh, it looks like machine guns in this game can... Oh, just run quickly, boys. There you go. Yeah, safety first, you know. So one of the most important things about the machine guns is that they're uh, mounted and need to be aimed in a certain direction in order to fire. They're, there's kind of like a... Maybe like less than a 90 degree angle of fire. Maybe it's like a 45 degree angle or so. What the hell's all these other weapons firing off? Is this auto cannon up here? Oh yeah, okay. We got flat guns up here, so flat gun training. So these are some of the different weapons available in the game. We've got different sizes of flak. Machine guns, mortars, and AT guns are pretty much most of what the infantry can use. There's a few other minor things, too, from the previous game that I'm sure will be in here, like spotlights and whatnot. Looks like we have a bunker here for training purposes. Uh, I don't know what he's doing, though. Oh, it looks like we can place different weapons on the tripod. Oh, that's cool. Great, so there's a lot of different features here. My goodness. That's great, so we can actually take something off the tripod or a gun from a 
uh, box and then put it onto a tripod. That's cool. Let's see what we got here. Ah. We can take an MG34 and install it onto the tripod. Let's see if there's a way to do that. Well, would you look at that? Hmm, I don't know. Double click on the weapon to mount it. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we can actually mount machine guns. That's cool. Oh, didn't know that. And now we can just hit targets. Well. Oh, How neat. Alright, let's go. Time for some more missions in Gates of Hell. So this is 1941, after the invasion of Poland. We're on the border of uh, Poland and Belarus, I believe. Looks like we got over a mine and uh, took a hit. Looks like the Batmobile lost a wheel, I suppose. I see a engineer with us. That's interesting. Grab a mine detector from the truck and sweep the road ahead. All right, you got it. Looks like there probably is going to be some combat here shortly. Shouldn't he have an MP40, not a handgun? Might be a better idea for him to have that. Okay. And also, he's the mine... Uh, oh, that's the medic. Oh, what? Looked like he had something else on his back. Oh, I, oh, I see. The medic bag. Right. Okay, time to grab the medic... Or the uh, metal detector. Looks like we got a couple of those. And we should be able to detect stuff with one of these options. Maybe we have to have it in our hand. And then, maybe it'll just work this way. A little different than Meta War Assault Squad, where, of course, you have to select it as a mode, but I guess if you're walking with it, it's the same thing. First mine popped up. I'm sure there's more, of course. Looks like we've got two, possibly three. Yeah, there's many more mines. Wow, the uh, outdoor sounds are really good here. All right, I think that's all of them. Good. All right, so we've got, what, five or so mines? Looks like two, four I see right now. Nope, five. Clear out the mines. You got it. On to our new mission. Oh, sniper. We're engaged. Get down, everyone. Some Soviet border patrol. We'll provide suppressive fire medic. Take care of that man. Heal the bleeding soldier. Okay, so more in-game training. A lot of what we've learned before was just basically the uh, initial start of combat and how to set up guns and how to take cover. But now, things really begin. Yeah. Alright, so essentially what we want to do is get this guy healed before he bleeds out. And uh, yeah, where'd boy. our medic go? Okay, you take cover here. Medic, let's go! All right, there he goes. So if this works anything like call to arms, troops aren't healed right away. It takes a little while to stop the bleeding and get them stabilized to either uh, evac them or, in this case, just have them return to battle. There we go. And then he'll get a bandage and heal himself the rest of the way. So essentially he revives and then he self-heals too. All right, more patrols on the way. Hmm. Dig at least two foxholes and prepare for to repel enemy counterattacks. Good, now we get to set up defenses. Very nice. Hmm. Who has a shovel? Oh, it looks like they have emplacement options, but some of the troops don't have it. But here we have a small foxhole that we can dig. And we can actually place it a certain direction this way with the sandbags would be the correct one there and then who on this side has some more wrenching tools because they don't have to be in the precise position but elevated will probably be better than not looks like some of the soviet guards here have been eliminated so if we press victor we can see highlighted bodies of how many troops we were engaging helps out because if you hold charlie then you can see enemy weaponry if you need to pick up, uh, if an enemy drops a gun, let's say if you're on the Soviet side and you killed somebody with an MG42, 
probably going to be a little better that you grab an MG42 than keep a, you know, Mosin rifle if you're trying to defend. Sanitator here. Okay, let's get the medic in the back. Sanitator loss. Yeah. Okay, let's get the boys in the trenches. Second trench is almost complete. Not all the troops are under control either, so we'll have to kind of just stay put. Really swampy area here. Uh, when the train will not give you cover, you should dig your own entrenchments, of course. Now, that's another thing, too. If you're looking for more tips on uh, Gates of Hell, Call to Arms, or Men of War, there are some pretty good tutorials on my channel, especially about building defenses, that kind of are covered in that about this. Um, the, the, the UI is different and the operation is a little different, but the concept is still the same. Even if this were, uh, let's say, postscriptum, the idea of building a, a choke point and defenses are kind of still the same, although they're done a little differently. All right, here comes the enemy. Oh, we have an MG. That is under our control. Let's send him up over here. Oh, stand up. Actually, they're almost finished off. I think that's a little high on his shoulder, but... Game's still in development. Damn, nice work with the MG. That sounds more like an MG-40. No, it does sound like an MG-34. Really good work on these maps, too. They look really nice. A little swampy, a little foggy, even though it's not... It's a little hazy near this water. But nothing too crazy. All right, looks like we have three more contacts. Oh, no. Another wave of Soviets. Our medic in the back. Okay, that MG is going to need ammo soon. Let's go back and see if we can grab some with the medic. None of our men are really taking any uh, damage. We've got too much of a good position here. Uh, we got nothing. Well, we do have entrenching tools. So we could build even better defenses. We'll go ahead and have the medic set up another uh, position for us. Okay, well, the enemy continues to attack, but there's really no uh, breakthrough at all. They aren't even really shooting at us too much. Wow, they've lost quite a few men in an attack that really didn't do much. Sounds in this game are beautiful, though. Yeah, Just I the environment feels more alive. Everything about Metal War Assault Squad 2 and um, previous games just kind of were out of date. I really want to see another Metal War Assault Squad and more games like this, too, so that way you can pick and choose which ones you like or which ones you don't. In this case, I really like the, um, and there was a mod many, many, many years ago for Men of War Assault Squad 2 that was probably one of the most brutal Soviet mods that I'd ever seen and was abandoned long ago. But it really captured the brutality of war in a way that never was covered by any other mod. I, I don't even remember the name of it, but there are several videos on the channel of it. I'll have to go and check that out sometime. All right, looks like the enemy is eliminated. Oh, it looks like we're being fired on by the village now. Ooh. Oh, it looks like the enemy has a few machine guns. Wow, three? Damn, they really got a lot of defenses here. We're going to need a vehicle. Yeah, they want us to flank now from the north. Well, so much for those defensive positions, huh? Flank the village, take out all MGs, and neutralize the perimeter. Oh, there's our medic still. Or no, the uh, rifleman. Oh, we're in command of all the troops now. Actually, no. Just a few of them. 
Do we have the MG on our side? Oh, we do. Great news. Okay, so they want us to flank from the north, so let's get over here. We're going to go as far this way as we can. Alright, so if we're going to flank, we probably will approach... Uh, you know what? There's actually really no defenders over here at all. This might be a good way to get around that machine gun, though. Let's go up to these, uh, this debris here. We'll see if we can take out the Soviets from there. We'll use speed rather than stealth. Try to overrun them. There's not too many of them, actually. Mostly the machine guns are the most... Uh, biggest threat. PPSH there. Oh, PPD-40. Yeah, interesting. There we go. Okay, we're going to flank from the uh, the eastern side now. We're going to try to come in on the east. Without getting too close to that one building. Alright, we got a man down. Trying to clear the way for the machine gun so we can set up here. Really not that many Soviets here at all. Okay, let's have this guy take cover. Damn, where's the medic? Help, help this guy first. Okay, MG needs to do a little bit more work. He can't engage because he can't see. There we go. Now I can do some work. Situation's a little tricky because we're trying to cut the village in half. But we've almost got it clear. The biggest threat now is in front of us. And the machine gun. This isn't a real uh, combat situation though, so we're not gonna... As in the... Our allies are not really gonna push forward. Um... Did you... Did you hear that? He was fixing up that German robot with a wrench. What the hell was... What was that? It was like a wrench sound effect for him fixing up one of those guys. Okay. So these aren't... So we're, we're not taking losses at all and our men aren't being wounded. They're, they're robots. Sentient uh, beings that are, are just simply being repaired. According to that sound effect. Alright, all robots are ready to go. Initiate 010011. We gotta get the uh, medic a different gun. Okay, we should be ready to clear out the machine gun. Oh, how lovely. Now we just need to take this building here. Oh, actually, that's already cleared out too. Well, good job. Took us a little bit to get in, but... Once we uh, pushed up, wow, look at all the... Okay, we've killed quite a few troops. One machine gun left. Let's get it with a grenade. Oh, somebody lob. Just for fun. Oh, great range on that grenade. Get wrecked. <laughs> okay.
All right, now we have ourselves a tank. Very nice. Okay, so now we can get a repair kit cooking off. Interesting that the first two missions for the Germans are quite good at uh, being uh, tutorial. I, that, that base camp mission was quite boring since I'm really familiar with stuff. I wanted to see what they would do, but no surprise there. This is ammo for the tank, so we'll grab all this. Oh, yeah, we got to carry it, like, one at a time. I think, actually, what we could do, too, is in Men of War and in this game, some vehicles can be loaded and kept as kind of like repair vehicles. Um, Ammunition vehicles, and then it'll just auto-load. Like, for example, if we capture this, though it's marked transport, if we capture that, it'll be marked as a, um, it'll be marked as a uh, supply vehicle, like, such as this, but this is for fuel. So we probably bring a fuel truck over here, and this crate might actually be for ammo, too. It just depends on whether or not it's actually meant for it or not. Uh, this is probably a transport truck, I assume. This has a repair kit on board, though, so we could go back and grab one from there. Let's tell one of our troops to go back and grab a repair kit. And machinery is not so comp... It's complicated, but not as much as modern day machines. So our troops are pretty capable of fixing up stuff, minor stuff. In this case, this is a Soviet tank? Yeah. It's the uh, BT, right? BT... Kind of reminded me of, of those 38T. Yeah, it's a BT-7. I was thinking... <laughs> for a moment, I thought it was one of those uh, six-ton tanks or whatever. I forget exactly the, the 38T or whatever that may be. But anyway, let's have our troops go out there. Now, what we can do, too, is the captured uh, village can be used to bring over machine guns, too. So the two Maxim machine guns that the enemy was firing at us with. We can turn against them. T-37A right here. Very nice. Okay, so if we need more fuel, it could be... Whoa, 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 whoa. We can... We can bring more fuel. Let's actually see if we can fuel it up this way. Oh, we have repair kits on board, too. Awesome. They probably told me that, but a lot of the text is just kind of redundant and tedious. All right, let's have this guy come back. Just give me objectives. That's all I need. The true soldier right there. Give me orders. That's what you want to hear. All right, enemy has bridge defended lightly. Looks like there's a vehicle here, too. Just a small truck. Times two. Another one there. Okay. So we'll get that vehicle loaded up. I think we'll keep our medic. What we'll probably end up doing is just keeping a few German riflemen for the tank crew. I think maybe three t troops to... Command that tank, and then we'll take everyone else and have them uh, assist in the assault in the village. Once we get the enemy tank out of the way, that'll be the biggest problem solved. Nice. MP40 coming with. And these three can go on uh, tank duty as soon as the repairs are complete. Hopefully it's nothing more than just the track. And we should be able to occupy the tank already. If we need to supply it more, we can do that quick, quickly and easily. Okay. So we have fuel. 650, done. Uh, ammo has already been brought in. Just a few rounds. We'll uh, have a few of our troops stand by and bring in more. Actually, I think if the tank is brought closer it might auto refill but it's usually got to have the white circle that's how the fuel automatically did itself Let me try to get all these all this ammunition dropped in here give me a little more room might need a few rounds to break that enemy tank and we'll get some more HE rounds to deal with the infantry and to try to take down buildings one of the most useful things for light tanks is eventually it will uh, become necessary to take down enemy buildings or occupied buildings so that way you can bring your roof down on them and make it a lot easier to kill them either with your own infantry or to just actually kill them with the falling debris. That's a good idea to do both. Alright. So about 32 rounds of HE ammunition.
And about 40 rounds of AP ammunition should be enough. It looks like the turret was damaged as well. Now it's just the tracks, so let's see if we can repair that. It looks like she's double tracked, so we should be able to get another soldier to help out. If there's two repair kits, and there is. So that's one thing you can do too, is you can have uh, two times uh, soldiers repairing stuff. Might even be three. In this case, I think it was turreted and double tracked, so it'll take a little while to get it up and running, but... Okay, let's get our troops into position for an attack. I think we could take the southern village. Last thing I don't... I don't want to happen is for these uh, troops here to get, you know, tipped off of our presence and then the tank to come over. If we if we happen to trigger these troops and they attack us, you know, the AI starts to deploy and engage us, that's fine. we got a machine gun they can walk right into. In fact, let's go ahead and set the boys up here on the on the fence. And if the enemy happens to spot us... Oops, darn. I wish that wouldn't have happened. Oh. Okay, well, we've got... Two tracks almost repaired. This is great. Oh, this is going to be great. So 650 liters there, I'm assuming. Service in the abandoned armored vehicle. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it's finished yet. It can't move until the tracks are both repaired. And it is. Good. Now we can move. All right. We have ourselves a vehicle. Now the game is still in um, it's still in this other mode that I'm not used to controlling, so I'll have to update my settings again after that recent hot hot fix. But controlling vehicles in third person, uh, even if you're controlling a light or medium tank, it may as well be like a modern Abrams if you know how to control it right. It'll be an unstoppable weapon. All right. Speaking of which, let's load with HE. Oh, lovely! How these tanks operate. This is beautiful. Now, as an FYI, we previously played as the uh, Soviet uh, defense uh, uh, mission, which is the only other one available in this current beta. And uh, after kind of completing that a little bit more, I can confirm that there was some stuff at the end of that mission that we didn't yet see. So I'll definitely go back to play that uh, sometime in the future and kind of redo it with all my settings uh, corrected and show the full mission as there's also been some hot fixes and some other things that I remember for all to arms being slightly different. All right, let's open the war. If any of the troops are irritated, nope. Okay, let's try to bring this house down. Nice. Parts of the house coming on down. We're going to try to remove the fence so the enemy can't take cover. And the boys are opening up. Could have Molotovs, but I'm willing to risk it. I don't think anybody's inside the house, but that certainly looked cool, and that's part of the game as well. It's looking sweet. Things gotta look cool when you're attacking, you know? Part of the fun. Okay. Somebody taking cover next to that vehicle must be on this side of the house. Oh, oh yes, the enemy tank's been triggered. Excellent. All right, so, oh, yep, he's already automatically switching to AP. Armor piercing rounds are loaded. This tank only has a machine gun. Wow. He's taking some good hits. Ooh, we got him. Oh, yep, yep. Crew's bailing. Good. Okay, we got troops kind of sneaking around trying to get us with uh, anti-tank guns. At least that's what I would do. I mean, anti-tank grenades. There's a soldier somewhere here. I don't know where he is. He must be inside the building. Oh, yeah, there he is. I can see him in the window.
Let's try a grenade. I believe we can cook these grenades off. Oh, that didn't work. I guess the so Soviet glass is pretty pretty good. No, oh, got him anyway. Screw it. All right, we'll just say we'll just say we got him with the grenade. <laughs> All right, let's get return back to the line. Ooh, we have a man down finally. Oh, he's just wounded. Yeah. Must been a lot of fire from the town. I wish the medics would auto heal. Even in uh, Metal War Assault Squad, it's always nice when a, there was a modded script where if a medic was nearby somebody, he would try to go auto-heal them. Medics are usually the first to get killed or wounded in this game. I think it's just my luck is all my own superstition. Oh, nice. HE rounds will definitely do some damage to cover. PPSH rounds grazing. This tank has a very slow turret, too, so use the tank speed. I think it might be a manually uh, cranked turret. Although some have different systems to turn them. Oh, somebody threw a grenade. Got another man wounded. Drive the enemy out of the entire settlement. Oh, looks like we got him. Making the fatherland proud. Weird mission, uh, kind of just like a... Um, well, it's part of the boot camp missions, but not really like um, friendly losses. Oh, yeah, anytime somebody becomes uh, incapacitated it con and considers it to be a, uh, a, lo a loss, even though uh, not really. Let's go back to the main menu then and take a look at things. So um, that's the military camp and trial by fire missions for uh, the German side, which is good because it gives you a tutorial and then a little extendo tutorial. I'd say that the Soviet missions currently are a little bit more challenging. So once you get there... Zaradnu is probably, with the one mission, Absolute Zero is pretty good, and uh, we'll have yet to come back to that one as well. Uh, I don't know exactly what uh, other uh, extras there will be. Oh, definitely mod support. Great. And then unit library, so you can read about all the stuff. And uh, replays will load and things like that. Let's see the unit library. Nice. Very cool. So I hope we can actually use these as call-ins. I have yet to see more about this game, but it's hard to judge it just by one or two missions. I saw a lot of people doing that. Uh, in the previous uh, episode, and it's uh, hard to judge because there's not a full game here yet. I'll have to play some multiplayer to see how that works. You know, I want to I want to get a big full scale battle going with multiple you know Panther tanks attacking a bunch of uh, I don't know IS twos or something like that, and just just have some fun with it and see how it all goes. Um, I think the standout for this game will definitely be its campaigns because uh, it's probably more interesting to most people to see the Eastern Front rather than the Western because it's usually a little North Africa, France, and then that's it. That's where the Soviet Union versus Germany is from 41 to the end of the war. And you get to end the war too, so there's a little bit of closure, uh, which could be for both sides too, maybe playing the um, Sea Low Heights defense for the Germans is one of your last missions or defending Berlin itself. And then same as the uh, Soviet side too, taking those positions and finally winning the war. Well, that's it for now, guys. Um, I want more to do in this game. It is good. Uh, the devs are very kind and said that they'd send over additional keys, too. So for those of you who are watching, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you jump on the Discord. Otherwise, uh, it's no way I can get you some free keys to this game, too, when it fully releases. So make sure you check all the videos and smash like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thanks for the support as we're almost at a million. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.